Greetings this fine evening. Doing a little bit of line work here. So in regard to hardware, this is a hunt number 102 steel nib. And one of the things to take into account is that these these are mass produced but that doesn't mean that they're all exactly the same. And one of the So for instance, if you if you look at how this is this is angled on the paper, it's angled on the side. Or on a kind of a three quarter angle. And that provides a nice slim, thin, thin line. But, what is that? But depending on the characteristics of that individual pen, you could have 15 steel nibs, and maybe two or three come out to be able to do something like this. They don't all act the same. Because paper is exceptionally abrasive. Well, it's paper. It's not sandpaper, it's just paper. But it's the surface of paper is relatively abrasive. And so corners, sharp burrs that are produced in the stamping machines that make these pens, they get worn down, smoothed off. Well, I, I suppose the best way to explain that, that, that is I knew a guy at the, uh, it was the Aspen Lodge Ranch Resort Kitchen just outside of Estes Park, Colorado. I worked there for three or four years. And one of the bartenders there, on his days off, he would come up because the bar was attached to the dining room. And all the wait staff would get off, hurry to get off of work after a big plate service and run to the bar and get wasted because they had on site employee housing. So they didn't have to worry about getting busted for DUI. And uh, he fancied himself a bit of a, a bit of a pool player. And he would, he would drink his beer and play pool. And he did a wonderful job playing pool until he got to a certain point where he got just a touch too drunk. And then he couldn't play pool worth his ass. And these steel pen points are kind of something similar to that. Uh, because of the abrasive nature of paper, you might get a pen point that is just absolutely perfect in everything you do, and then one day it will stop being that perfect. I have quite a few pen points that I stop using for certain purposes specifically because of that. And that's the other instance why I use old old paintbrushes. So this one, these two, I use these for pen holders because, you know, that yellow brush over, or that yellow brush handle over there, that one's for rough, big, 
fat lines. And this little itty bitty little, I think this is a Righteousen 10-0. What is it? Oh, it's all the, weather, all the lettering is worn off. This one's for really fine work and this nondescript brush that's probably older than I am, no better than a twig, uh, is for general little dotting dot work. But each each pen ends up developing its own kind of personality. And it seems kind of weird and inefficient in this day and age of digital arts. But that's how that goes. And there are plenty of tools out there that would make this process faster, more efficient. And considering the absolute huge number of projects I want to work on, that would be optimum. That would be awesome because I can get onto another project and get onto another project. But I stopped using repeatographs for a particular reason. There's an organic character to the lines using these steel tips that you don't get with the repeatographs. And I can use a mic micro, micron. I have a whole bunch of microns. Eventually that little fiber tip can be can be used in such a way that gives you that organic line, but it wears them out faster. And I have Copic, the uh, multi-liners. I've had those. I, I gave them to a co-worker's daughter who liked drawing because I just didn't use them. They were, they were a weird cross between the repeatographs and the microns. And it just wasn't something I wanted. There's just... I mean, it's it's not a it's not a dig on the pen themselves. It's just that I never never took the time to specifically suss out a uh, uh, specific style with them. So. The, there's something else I was thinking about. This is why I've been generating a list of things to express on this channel other than my stupid shorts. Not my particular shorts, not the ones I'm wearing. But my videos of my drawing. Because the mind wanders, and drawing is boring. Produces awesome results, but the process is tedious and boring. It's like watching paint dry, literally. That's why, for the most part, the channel has been choked with such shorts because I could I could play the I could play the uh, the blood sports of 
complaining about this or complaining about that. Or I could sit there and find the next trending thing. And that's just not what I do. I've never been trendy. I've never been hip. Life's too short to waste one's time on such superficial crap. That's that kind of kind of brings me up to one thing though. So that was that's the this this whole notion of peacocking to express one's personality. Are you really expressing your personality? Or are you, are you trying to what they would say fake it to make it? Fake a personality to make sure that there's one there because you're insecure. And no, this isn't, this isn't, no, there goes that. This isn't about tattoos and piercings, though that plays a role in this, this asking, but it's the Corvette, uh, Mr. Bugatti. Oh, I got cats fighting outside. The joys of living out in the country. But that's for another channel. Or not another channel. Duh. I'm getting senile here. That's for another video. So. Anyway. Thank you for watching.